Hello and welcome back to LPC channel today. So in today's video, we are going to look at categorical frequency distribution. But before we take the example and then discuss extensively what categorical frequency distribution is, we need to have a background knowledge or idea or a definition about a categorical frequency distribution. So what is a categorical frequency distribution? It is used for data that can be placed in specific categories such as nominal or ordinary what level. So categorical frequency distribution, we are talking about data sets that can be placed in a specific what categories such as nominal or ordinary level. For example, we can have we can have what political affiliation as one example. Realize that when it comes to our country here, Ghana, we have a number of political parties. If you are in political A, you cannot be in political what B. Like when it comes to our religious affiliation, we have those in Christians, those in Muslims, we have traditions as well. When it comes to our major field of study, we have those who study, let's say, medicine, we have those who study, let's say, business administration, we have those who study, let's say, mathematics or statistics. Is that okay? So these are what we call what categories, meaning that each set of data is found in one what particular set of what category or group and as such if you are in category a you cannot be in what category what b so this is what we call what a categorical frequency distribution so in this set of data you're going to group data based on certain commonalities that exist between one set of data and out another is that okay so that's what we call a categorical what frequency distribution we are talking about group membership so in a group membership we can think of what the nominal level of measuring data where we talk about group membership is that okay and ordinary level to where we are into what classes or ranking of what set of what particular data so if you are in first class you'll be in first we have in second class you'll be in a second class so that's why we have what a categorical frequency we show when it comes to categorical frequency distribution we are talking about what nominal or ordinary level of what data set that's why we put them in what categories i believe that is clear so we use this where you want to place data in certain what categories and as a for indicator we have for example we have political affiliations we have religious affiliations our field of studying other study accounting other study statistics other study mathematics other study medicine other study other courses I and mean, we have a number of courses that we can talk about here so generally that is the idea about what a categorical frequency distribution i hope that is clear so now let's take an example here so we have example one here it says that the area of specialization of some selected students from school of business are given as follows so these are the selected what specialization or area of what study and then we are asked to construct a categorical frequency distribution for this particular data why is it so that this data is what why should you use categorical form of frequency distribution to actually construct because here realize that it's a course that it is studied by what individual students and then if you are studying atmi all things being equal we don't expect you to come and study what acf likewise if you are studying mib all things we don't expect you to come and study what lscm is that okay so that's how come we categorize this set of data under what or we group them under what categories and we're going to use categorical frequency distribution to actually group what this set of what data i hope that is clear so let's get into it so first of all we are going to identify the various areas of study in this what set of data determine also the number of times upon which this particular course is being studied by what some selected students from school of what business that will determine our frequency in this case i hope that is clear so let's start with it so first of all we're going to have our table which consists of class tally and then frequency you can even you can even as well find what the percentage for probably each word course that's been studied by these selected students from school of business you can try also do that in that case so let's have our table presented here so on my table i'm going to have my first column that represents what the class that represents what the class that represents the class and second we're going to have what a tally a tally and third we're going to have frequency frequency and fourth we can talk about what the percentage the percentage i'm talking about the percentage well, let me say let me indicate it for the percentage 
So we have our class, we have our tally, we have our frequency, and we have our, our percentage. Okay, so we are going to take into account the number of courses or areas of study that was selected from School of Business for a particular word, student. Is that okay? So we have ATMI as one. So we have that one here. And then we have ACF. And when it comes to categorical frequency distribution, if the data sets are not assigned with numbers, then we can arrange in terms of the class in any form. Is that okay? So why we but why we have numbers assigned to a set of data, that's why you need to arrange them based on what their order of what magnitude, whether in ascending order or in the descending what order. Of course, we don't have any number representing or assigned to each set of data here. That's why can we arrange them in any form. So let's be guided about that one too. So we have ACF here too. We also have L X C M as under course. We also have what M I B also as the last course that was captured in this set of what data. So now, so when it comes to ATM, we have what one here, another one making it two, another one here on a second. Okay, for the second we don't have any, but on the third row we have what one here making it three, another one making it four, here making it five, and then on the last show we have one here making it six, another one making it seven, another one making it what eight. All right, so you're gonna have your eight strokes indicated. So have here, sorry, so you have here to be one, two, three, four, then five here. One, two, three. So it is eight. Okay. So when it comes to ACF2, on the first row we have one here, another one making it two here, another one making it what three. On the second row we have another one making it four, another one making it what five. On the third row we have here six, seven, and then we have here to be eight, and then on the last row we have here to be what nine. So we have what. ACF occurring what nine times. So you have your first five strokes indicated one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So that will give us now without take up nine. And now you come to LSCM. So on that one, two, let's check on the first row. So on the first row, we have one here, right? On the second, we have another, I'm making it two three four five six seven eight nine so nine so you are going to have your nine strokes indicated so you have one two three four and five cross then one two three four and then that represents as what nine on mib2 let's see we have on the first row none on the second row we have one indicated then on the third we have one then on the fourth row we have one making it three then you have one making it what four so you're gonna have your four strokes indicated on the tally so we have what one two three and four and you have it as frequency as what four so at the end of the day your total frequency should sum up to so let's do that together on the calculator, we have 8 plus 9 plus 9 plus, should you plus for sorry for that. So 8 plus 9 plus 9 plus what 4, and that should fetch you what? That should fetch you 30. So at the end of the day, your total frequency should be equal to what? 30. At the end of the day, your total frequency should be equal to what? 30. So when it comes to the percentage, okay, just take individual frequency divided by total frequency and then multiply by what? 100. Is that okay? So let's try for the first one. So we have here to be 8 divided by what? 30 and then multiply by what? 100. And you have your percentage indicated. Likewise, how you to be what? 9 divided by 30 and then multiply by 100. There. We also have here to be 9 divided by 30 and then multiply by 100 likewise you have it to 4 divided by 30 and then multiply by 100 you have a frequency indicated so 
let's go through together so you have 8 divided by 30 and then multiply by what 100 so the first one you should be able to get something around where 26 26.667 percent okay all right and then that of 9 to we follow the same thing 9 9 divided by 30 and then multiply your result by what 100 and that should fetch you what exactly what 30 that should fetch you exactly 30 so 30 percent here likewise you can also go with 30 percent and then let's come back to the four so four divided by 30 and then multiply the result by what 100 and that should fetch you something around where 13 point 13 point let's see Three three percent. Thirteen point three three percent. And that's how can we find a percentage for each frequency with respect to the particular cost under consideration. So at the end of the day, the total should sum up to what hundred percent. Sum up to hundred percent, and you are good to go. So this is why we bring an end to the categorical frequency distribution. So in our next video, we are going to look at how to represent what a set of data graphically where we're looking at histogram frequency polygon and then cumulative frequency and other graphical representation form so thank you for watching and i'll see you in that section and have a nice day bye bye